What you preached on and what I just said was what I uh, what you preached on was what I just said that past week. He said it's it's it just made me it's made me have a good week. You know that's what I want, and it's okay to tell me that. Hey, that was a good message. Or that 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 was just for me because that helps me to be motivated to go and do it all over again next Sunday. I believe Faith Life Church is a church that's on the move. Don't you? Praise God. No sitting still for us. Amen. Glory to God. But today I want to minister uh, what I can here on. And I, I guess the. Is there any other kids who want to come? Okay. Well, you got one for me. I want you to listen real close this morning. You said, well, Pastor, we probably heard a lot of things that all this message that I'm going to say, and you keep on the right, but hasn't taken hold on you yet. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God only. And if you don't hear it over and over and over, my brother Hagin said one time, they said, they asked him, they said, why don't you speak preaching on Mark 11, 23, 24? He said, well, when you all get it, he said, I will. Amen. So I'm going to talk about the danger of our mouths today. We're going to open up with this scripture right here. Isaiah 57, uh, 19. And the word of God says, I create the fruit of your lips. Do you have any idea what that means? I create the fruit of your lips. Whatever you say, that's going to be created. That's how much power God has given us with our words. Did you know on the first page of Genesis, God said seven times. And every time he said something, something became. You say, well, that was God. Yeah, we've got the word of God today. If it's in our hearts, and the minute we say that, praise God, it starts creating. Not because of us, because of who God is and what God's done and what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. So it says, I create the fruit of the lips. So if you're having a bad hair day today, maybe you might check up on yourself what you said Thursday. Because God created, I mean, God said here, I'm not saying nothing to God. He said, I create the fruit of your lips. I, I don't like to be around people. I love people, but I don't like to be around people. The minute they start talking to you, I'll tell you what, I, I walk with some people that's got the most negative mouths I've ever seen. And I try to walk faster so I don't have to put up with that. Because, see, if you listen to all that the people saying today, you'll bow down and you'll probably become just a little bit like them. That's why it's so important to, 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 to spend time with peoples of faith. That's what God's all about. He's the faith God. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to the him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will what? Heal him. him. Praise God. Hallelujah. I've been going through some stuff, not good stuff the last two weeks, physical stuff, you know. I've done something to myself back when I was in 1971, got in a car wreck and then I broke my foot. And, uh, and I mean, the second time I've broken my right foot, and this time they had to put uh, pins and needles. There's one guy standing there. He, I remember him. He was a Korean or something. He said, Mr. Sloan, uh, we're going to have to take that foot off. I said, You ain't taking my foot over. And here come old man, uh, Dr. Rutledge. 
He had thick glasses on, left-handed, you know. I mean, wow, oh, Lord. And he said, I can save your foot. I said, you the man. <laughs> but I've had trouble with that foot for 20, about 50, two years or three now. And this week, I don't know whether it's some rain or whether it was cold weather, <clears throat> but I, I haven't walked in in two weeks. And, and I just it, when I put weight on, it's like somebody jogging a knife through the top of my ankle. And, uh, but I have spoke the word of God over it, and I'm doing a whole lot better today. But uh, the word of God works, amen, okay? Amen. Now, I create the fruit, and I will heal them. Let's go to, to Proverbs uh, 18, 7. Now, watch this. Now, stay with me today. We're going real quick. Well, I'm going to read verse 6, uh, Kenneth. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calls for. You know, you can call a stroke onto your end of your body. <laughs> you didn't know that in the Bible, did you? <laughs> a fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calls for strokes. Well, I'll tell you what, every time you get around some people, they say, My high blood pressure. My high blood pressure's voice so high. And here comes another and says, I'll bet mine's higher than yours. <laughs> I stop eating dinner with some fellows that work like that every day. I mean, and I start hanging around with Pentecostals. And, and I, I knew that was the right move for me. I really do. But these people, I mean, I'll tell you what, they, they start talking about, buddy, I couldn't sleep a lick with my back hurting me all night right long. Well, I'll tell you what, my back's been hurting three weeks. Now talk that. <laughs> Why are you going to talk that for? Stop talking that, church. Are you listening to me? A fool's mouth is his instruction, and his lips are the, the snare of his soul. Look at verse 7. There. A fool's mouth is his destruction. You know what destruction is, don't you? Bad stuff. A fool's mouth is his instruction, and his lips are a snare unto his soul. Verse 18, verse 8 in, in, verse, in chapter 18, the words of it. Now watch this, folks. I'm telling you what. This has been, I hear I can't, uh, the words of a talebearer are as wounds. Did you know these people today, they hear something bad on some Christian? I just couldn't wait to call you. I had to tell you about what they thought, what they done. How do you know what they done? Was you there? No, but, 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 but I believe I believe it. It don't matter if you believe it or not. If you don't know, just don't say nothing. Don't be a talebearer. Because why? Because they're as wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. It breaks somebody's spirit when you say bad things about them. When you carry tails on them. Come on, somebody. I'm glad you're videoing this today, brother Mike. Because this is good. It's going to, this will make Christians out of you. Come on, lighten up a little bit. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> no, no. Now, I want to go, and the Bible says down here that, uh, see, I had another one, the, uh, verse 1821. Now look at this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Did you know you can talk yourself to death? <laughs> Did you know you can talk yourself into victory? Yes. Why? Because the greater ones in a Christian. Right. Amen. I've got a little book that got 148 verses in it that tells you who you are in Christ Jesus. They have some in here. I'll take see if anybody wants one. Let's go back up and see. Let's see. Where's this other something? It was. It was. Let's see. Oh, I did. we didn't read verse 14. Now, there you go. Thank you. <clears throat> the spirit of a man or woman, that is the real you. Your spirit is the real you. We are a man and woman and women made up of three different parts. Spirit, soul, our psyche, will, and emotions, and our body. So it says the spirit of man will sustain his infirmity. You get weak in your spirit, and your infirmity is going to hang around a lot longer. 
What does that mean, Pastor? That means you've got to keep speaking the word. You've got to speak the word, speak the word, speak the word. Get it down into your heart, praise God. Get it down into your spirit. Because see, that's when your spirit's going to sustain you. Is when your spirit man overrides your flesh man. Mm -hmm. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? Are you listening to me? Let's look at Mark 11, 20, uh, 12. Verse, Mark 11, verse 12, 14. This is Brother Hagin's stuff, that he, uh, scripture that he preached for uh, 60 years. Now look at this. This is when they come into Bethany. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, or come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything to their uh, eat to their own. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for the time of the fruit was not yet. Stay with me. I've heard people preach this. They said, Well, the reason Jesus cursed that fig tree because he's mad because he couldn't have nothing to eat. I said, How stupid are you? Well, then you say, How bless her, uh, darling, uh, bless her, darling. Uh, how do you say that, Dickie? Bless the garland. Bless the garland heads. And now, some way everybody said that. But he said, let the spirits be strong. Now, watch this. He did not be angry about that tree. He was showing them faith 101. Faith 101. You remember in these classes you've got English 101, English 102, blah, blah, blah. And then 101 is all I got through. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding because they was top four. Stay as big as I hate that stuff. Excuse me, little girl. I didn't even say that right here. You hate it. You're not the light screw. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus answered and said unto them, No man eat the fruit of these hereafter and forever. And his disciples heard it. Now let's go on up to verse. Uh, uh, 20. Now watch this. He did this. He cursed that tree. He spoke and cursed them. No man's going to eat fruit of you hereafter. Okay, now watch this. This was when he spoke with his mouth. Remember about the mouth? Mouth can talk us to death or it can bring life. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Stop right there. We can read right over that and pass some things up. The fig tree was dried up from the root system that you can't see. The minute you speak the word of God over your infirmity, over your sickness, disease, over your lack, over your bondages, it goes to the root system. And the leaves wasn't dried up right then. They were still green. But the root system Whatever causes your problem, that's where that word goes, down into that root system, and it kills, it kills the roots, and the next morning, what they did. And Jesus, uh, and Peter, calling to remembrance, says unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. Now they can see it the next morning. That's what causes people not to get healed is because they can't wait till the next morning. They can't wait till two weeks. They can't wait till a month, praise God, to see the effects of the root system dying so that you can see the outer part dead. Well, remember what Isaiah 57 says? He says, no weapon formed, in Isaiah 54, I believe it is, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue why did he say that every tongue that rises up? Did you know these people can, is talking bad about this church and about you right now? But praise God, we're on the move. I don't care what I'm saying. We're just doing the will of God. Praise the word. Peter called and remembers, saying unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which you cursed, cursed us with. He didn't cuss it. He cursed it. You do know there's a place over in in, in the, the eastern world right now. I believe it's it's in the Israel, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that was cursed in the Bible four thousand years ago, and to this day it won't grow anything. 
One of the kings, I mean, it may be King Solomon, cursed him. Saul. But it don't grow anything today. So, so when, when you curse your sickness, when you curse what is wrong with you, well, then it goes to the root system and then it brings in the fruit. Now, I'm going somewhere with this. Stay with me. Now, Mark 11, 22, and Jesus answering said, then have faith in God. If you look at that original Greek up right there, have faith in God, means have the God kind of faith. See, faith is a faith. God is a faith God. We've got to have his kind of faith, and that's the word of God coming out of us. Speak the word of God. There's people on the YouTube or YouTube or how you say that right now, Preachers is on there. I mean, they're trying to to say that uh, we're a false church. We're a we're a, we've fallen away from the, everything you know. But I, I'm telling you what, if it's in the Bible, if I I'm not falling away from nothing. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. Have faith in God. Johnny said a while ago, and I heard a little testimony there. You know, you got to have faith in God. You got to believe God. The Bible says all things that believe in God are possible. The things that are possible with God are impossible with man. So let God do the possible. or the, Let him bring the impossible into your life. Now watch this. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say Verily I say, number one, that I say unto, that whosoever shall say, number two, unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt, but believe in his heart, but shall believe in those things which he saith, number three, shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he saith, number four. The issue here. God, Jesus is saying, whatever you say, whatever you say. And he just spoke about a mountain one time. That's why. If you've got a mountain in your life, what's the cure for that? Saying the word of God. Amen. Therefore I say to you, what things forever you desire, when you pray, believe that you have seen them, you shall have them. If you believe that in your prayers that you've got your healing, not when you when you got it in the flesh, but when you receive it, you receive it right then when you pray, but it may take you to two or three days or a week or a month to manifest to you. But it will always prosper. It will not, Isaiah 55, 11, the word of God will not turn void or empty, but it will prosper where to in his sin. If you send that word of God out of your mouth, praise God, Hallelujah, it will prosper. If you don't take, it's just like planting a garden, praise God. You plant your bean seeds and, uh, and everything. <laughs> I, I call wood grow back. <laughs> and what happened is I had this bigger tiller, and he got me down in the garden. I saw my knees, and he's dragging me through the garden. And I done plant, planted one row of beans in there, and he built them all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, and, uh, and I told Woody, he said, listen, you can't dig your seed up now. You've got to leave the ground. You've got to leave that seed in your ground, your heart. Yeah. <laughs> I can sit down on the back porch and laugh myself. <laughs> he said, leave that seed in the ground. Don't eat food with it. Put it. It's all right. It'll be all right. It'll come up. And that's the truth. The natural garden will always come up when you plant a seed. A spiritual garden it's not so much as as the as the seed that goes in that, it's how good is your ground. Huh? Gotta have good ground. I, I can tell you what, I'm glad nobody didn't take a picture. This is one of them big behind time tillers. And then I got that thing started. I bought it off my brother in law. And it <laughs> I was I was going pretty good through the through them rows through the you know, and not having that. But all of a sudden, he got me down, and there I went right down on top of that bean roll, you know, flying beans flying everywhere, you know. 
So I had planted, I planted that row of beans three times and finally they come up. <laughs> so you can't let weeds come in your garden either. You've got to keep your garden clean. You've got to keep your spiritual garden clean of unforgiveness. Now watch this. But when you stand praying, forgive if you have all against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. I'm telling you, folks, this stuff works, but we gotta, we got we gotta have a clean garden. You know what I mean? So now, let's go to uh, 1 Samuel 17. And I think we just go over the flash first. Now that we glory to God, let's see now. Now this is when David, he was he was probably, uh, I've run the history on that, he was probably 17, 18 years old. He was a shepherd. He kept, he watched the flock, watched the sheep. Now his brothers were standing, there was a giant named Goliath coming after the armies of the Israels, Israelites. And all these brothers, they're all standing in the sideline, you know. And here come David down through there a little old ruddy teenager, and he said what? He said, and David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause to fight? Have you got a cause to fight today? We're fighting with Satan and every demon of hell. If you've got a cause, praise God, you got to stand up and take it. Don't be sitting around on the sidelines waiting for somebody else to win your battle. You win your battle, praise God, because you are have the great one living in you in the name of Jesus, and you can fight your battles. Now, don't I'm not trying to say don't let your pastor in on it. I'll get in on it with you. I'll help you fight it. Amen? Amen. Now, let's, let's go on down to verse 40. I'm trying to get through this, so I smell the barbecue and it's not in here again. <laughs> David took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones. Everybody say five smooth stones. Five. Now these weren't just any stones. They were five smooth stones. Out of the brook and put them in his shepherd's bag which he had even in a scrip and his sling was in his hands. And he drew near the Philistine in verse 41, and the Philistine came and said, Draw near to me, David. And the man that bowed the shield went before him. Let's read on. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David that disdained uh, him, he disdained him, for he was but a youth. He was 17, 18 years old, and ruddy and fair countenance. The Philistine said unto David, Now watch this. Satan will talk to you in your time of need. He will tell you that there's really no help. He will tell you that it's a lot bigger than what it is. Most of the time it's a symptom. And Satan puts lying symptoms on us. Can I have an amen? Now watch this. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that you come to me with a stag? The stage and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give the flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Let's read on. Then said David, said, David said something. He said something here four times. David said, Then said David to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear. And with a shield, but I come to you. Come on, somebody help me with I come to you, hallelujah, in the name of the Lord of hosts. Woo, glory to God. I come to you with the name of Jesus, Satan. I don't need all this stuff on me. I come to you in the name of Jesus, and you've got to bow down at the name of Jesus. You can't stand before me. Amen. Now, watch as he says this to God. The God of the armies of Israel, whom you have divine. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thine take with thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls there and to the wild beast of the earth. 
that all the earth may know that there is a God. If you don't say, we had a boss that, or I guess the owner of the company I worked for one time, he said, like, if, if, talking about safety, if you see something, say something. If you see something Satan's trying to do to you, you better start talking. You better start saying the word of God. Amen? Remember, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity if it's not broken. And the way to break it, get her a bottle of water back there in line and bring that up to her. You got your bottle of water here, girl. You remember David's already said some twice. It's all right to tell the devil the word of God. He tried to tell it to you. And he, remember Psalm, remember Matthew uh, 4 over there where he took uh, the, the Holy Spirit took him up to Jesus up to be tempted? Satan quoted the word of God to him. And Satan has quote that word to you and it's all destroyed. It's all tore up. Don't fall for that. And this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with a sword and a spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give your will give you into our hands, praise God. Amen. Amen. And David put his hand into the back, remember that five stones? And then he slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, and that the stone sunk unto his forehead, and he fell upon his face. Let's read on here. So David prevailed. Do you want to prevail in your battle? Yes. David said four times, and we didn't get them all, we got two of them, three of them, but he said what he would do. He said, this day I'll have your head and I'll give it to the army of, of Israel. A little old teenager. It doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are, the name of Jesus works for everybody. So you people in our congregation, I've had to put that, I've had to tell myself, I am not too old to fight the fight. I'm not too old to speak the name of Jesus. I'm not too old to stop and help somebody beside the road. When I first went to Somerset, there was a church we went to Assembly of God down there at uh, uh, Stanford. And when we went to church that morning, there was a man sitting out beside the road Right before he got to church, and he was the man, he was just a beggar, you know. You tell he was a he was a beggar, and he didn't have nothing. And you know, like me and everybody else in the church went right on nice to him. Nobody never stopped to help him, but the pastor had something going on here. About halfway through the pastor's message, here walked that fellow into their church. And everybody was said. Sit over there, sit over there. We don't want you to sit with us. And when the when the boy got up, when that man got up to about the front, he turned to the pastor and he took his disguise off and he was somebody in the church. Fool them ever one. Fool them ever one. So that's why it's important. And so you may be entertaining angels on the way. That's the heart of God to do heal. That's the, the heart of God was David. A teenager, and he and something else he did right there. He started telling the the guy. He said, "I killed a bear. I killed the lion, and you're just like one of them. I'll have your head today." What was he doing there? He was rehearsing his victories, and that built his faith up. All right, now watch this. David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Let me tell you what. He threw one stone. God gave me a name for those stones. In the, in the spirit. He said, you've got the, uh, uh, the word. Let's see. I wrote it down here so I can get it. Oh, yeah. He said, the one of those stones was praying in the Holy Ghost. Another stone, the second stone, was the blood of Jesus. Oh, that's a powerful weapon. Another stone was the name of Jesus in the spiritual warfare. And the, the next one was the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God coming out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
listen to me. We can't lose. We can't lose. If we would get our eyes on things above, set your affection on things above and not on the things of this world, you think about it. If we die, we're going to have sudden glory. True glory to God. That's dancing. Uh, that's dancing. Talk. You know, everybody don't like to think about going to heaven, but you better get your thinking caps on. So think about it. Praise God, Jesus coming back. I mean, you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's a real thing. Well, you know, Pastor, I've heard that all my life. And, and the Bible, you know, it's all about faith. And I'm not going to believe nothing. I can't see. I said, you'll believe hell when you get there. Faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He is a reward for them that diligently seek him. Come on, how diligent are we with our prayer life? How diligent are we with praying in the Holy Ghost? Oh, don't talk about that Holy Ghost stuff. That'll run people off. How they may shake their kid on my hand now. Let them go. Are you listening to me? The Bible says tongues are a sign for them that believe not. They're not a sign for the believer. Every believer should have that, that, that miracle. Oh, Lord. I don't want to get off on that because it always makes people lose their appetites and everything. That one thing. Satan fights that more than anything in the world. He, he don't fight you. He, he knows that you're going to get saved, Rob, but he knows that he can defeat you and, and experience the good things of God in, the, in our lives. But praise God, I defeated him when I become a born again Christian. I defeated him when I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. I pray in the Holy Ghost because I know he can't tell what I'm talking about and that makes him so mad. He's like a little Bay little kid or something. You say no, he's over there kicking his feet against the, against the, uh, the baseboards and saying, I don't like that. I, I, I don't like that. I don't like that. So pray, pray, pray in the Holy Spirit. Oh, man. In other tongues. <clears throat> Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. David got the victory. Hallelujah. Now watch this verse 52. Now that they, now that Goliath's gone, now that the, your giant, now that the giant's gone, somebody helped you. David helped the Israelites. David defeated the giant, a little old 16, 17-year-old boy with one sling in the name of the Lord God of hosts. Now watch this. And the men of Israel and Judah rose and shouted and pursued. It ain't no use to pursue now, man. He's gone. We got him. Why are you going that? There's so many Christians that when your giant's gone and somebody gets that giant out of your life, then you say, where's he? I'll, I'm chasing him. I'll chase him. Man, I'm, mean. I'm a mean, 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 mean machine when it comes to the devil. No, you wouldn't because you stood right there and let somebody else defeat the giant for you. Are you listening to me? I like that the Israelites, the men of Israel, they, they shouted and pursued the Philistines until they come to the valley of Ekron. And the wounded uh, of the Philistines fell down on the way of uh, Hazard. I suppose I'm trying to say that word. <laughs> Even unto Gath, there God. The children of Israel returned from chasing after Philistines and they spoiled their tents. Oh, yeah, they got some of the. Blessings after that. But I stand before you today telling you that it's time that you stand and face your giant. There's not one bit of the army, armor of God in Ephesians 6, 10 through 17 that's made for the back. You turn your back on Satan and he will he will do you in. One more, let's go to another place or two. Uh, uh, what was David doing? Romans 4, 17. Look at this. <clears throat> Romans 4 17 there we go as it is written I have made thee a father of many nations before him who believed whom he believed even God who quickeneth dead who God makes alive dead things and calleth those things which be not as though they were 
What did God do when he stood in the, on the first page of Genesis and what he said? He said, he said light be. There never had been light before. He created the fruit of his lips. He called those things that be not as though they were. When you're sick, you've got to call in health and stop looking at the giant. Uh, one more. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4. And we'll go eat. Uh, I heard somebody here now. Uh, maybe nine. <laughs> See, it may be second Corinthians. Just give me just about another five seconds here. Second Corinthians, I know, okay, I'm sorry. Second Corinthians 4, 16. Now, Paul is saying the same thing here in second Corinthians 4, 16. On that, he says, he said, he's saying, calling those things that be not as though they were, but he says, for which cause we faint not. Don't faint about your circumstances. Don't give in to your circumstances. They are bad, but God is bigger. God is better. Amen? Amen. For which cause we faint not, but through but though our outward man perish, yet the inner man is renewed day by day. If you keep your spirit renewed day by day, Romans 12, 1, if you keep it, that spirit man, your spirit man renewed, he will sustain your infirmity. He will get you through every situation that you're in. He will bring you from nothing to something. Amen. He brought you from a nobody to a somebody. Somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. What is he? What about our mouths? Proverbs 13.3. It says. Uh, <clears throat> let's see what. It says. Somebody look at it from right real quick. Proverbs 13.3. Oh yeah. It says if you keep your mouth shut. You'll have life. But if you open your mouth wide, you'll have destruction. So it's like that song of Kenny Roberts, you know, you got an old wind to fold him and an old wind to play him. What's the matter? You don't like my analogies? <laughs> you got an old wind to, <laughs> an old wind to fold him. <laughs> he either keep with his mouth, keep it alive, but he that opens it, it's alive. And, and let's, look, let's look at one more. First strength, let me see, see. Uh, Let's go back to that one he says, and I'm going to quit. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Look at this. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed by day by day. Look at this. Roll up right here. For our light affliction. Everybody say light affliction. Everything you go through, in God's eye, it's a light affliction. Well, say it's gonna feel like that to me, man. Yeah, but when you've got the word of God over top of your life and in your spirit, it's a light affliction. Look at me, look at me, listen to me. For our light affliction, was it before a moment? It may be for six months, it may be for a year, but that's a moment in the eyes of God. Come on now, come on now. Worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Do you want, the Bible says, Deacon, that we are changed from faith to faith to faith, from glory to glory to glory. If you want to go to into glory, you've got to put your giant down and with the word of God and speak that word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like Jesus taught faith 101, curse that situation in your life and it shall be cursed with the word of God. Now it says, while we look not at the things which are seen, don't look at your circumstances. I can preach this right here all day and you still gonna go home and look at the situation that you're in. Don't do that. <laughs> don't look at the what he says, don't look at things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. If you're sick, don't look at your sickness, look at the healing in your life. Hallelujah. If you're facing death, don't go make pick you out of casket and make your fishing appointment and go fishing. I'm telling you, church, this is this is faith 101. We gotta stop acting like the world. Jesus says, you come out from among the world and be ye separate, then I'll be your God. Amen. If we want to see miracles, if we want to see signs, wonders, and they come out, we've got to be in the spirit realm and not in the flesh realm. Come on. 
Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. We look at the things that are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. Remember, God said it was a lie of fiction. Everything you're facing is temporary. Everything in this world we face will change. How? With the word of God. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Did you know that the word of God is an eternal thing? It never changes. Praise God. Hallelujah. The word of God says I'm healed. Your body says you're sick. Which one do you want to believe? Remember that's what the, uh, the spies come back and said. You know it's, it's an evil. It, it's, 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 well, we, can't, we can't do nothing with the giants. It's bad. Well, God called that an evil report. I know people today, I, I, I've talked to some of them lately, they give Satan more glory than they do God. Oh, you know, Pastor, uh, I've been so sick, I thought I was going to die. You know, your flesh loves to do that. Satan loves for you to do that. Don't talk that. Talk about what the Bible says. Talk the word. Speak the word. It's a true thing that you've got sickness in your body when you're sick. I'm not saying deny that. Just don't allow it any place in your life. This faith walk is a walk, a daily walk. It's not just one time hearing it. It's, it's every day when you get up, it's a faith walk. I'm going to walk in faith today, praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to speak the word of God over my life. Hallelujah. Keep that light burning. I'm just glory to God. The God word will take you through and bring you out. Mm -hmm. And everything you face, if you'll speak God's word, God will bring you from something bad and into something better. Mm -hmm. Because there ain't nobody can do us like God. Ain't nobody can do us like Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Are you, are you here this morning? Mm -hmm. I took my watch off. I don't know what time it is. It's going on. Man, brought his little grandson to, to and a friend to. Uh, well, he come down. He come down to the real early at your house this morning, and uh, Banner said, uh, "Well, you ain't got no clean clothes." He said, "Oh, well, I'm. I don't go to church to be seen. I'm going to listen to the word." Aww. Are you listening to me? Church is not a place to flaunt your jewelry. Uh, Pat down your hair store. I, I can't do that no Pat down your hair style or, or, or say, uh, uh, look what I, uh, look. Mm, ah, if I try to show you what kind of ring they got, and they're choking to death. Can't get the word. Ah, 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 I'm trying to get you to look at it. That's not church. No. You know what I'm talking about. Church is a place to glorify God. Yes. Learn the word of God. Church is like a field station. You remember them old time field stations? You know, stop and you come out there and you pump gas, they pump your gas for it, they clean your windows for you, check your oil and everything. Well, you don't see that more. Everything's changed and everybody's got lazy. Did I say that? Wow. Father God, in Jesus' name, I pray that this word today went forth and ministered to everybody coming under the sound of my voice. And I thank you, Father God. And I praise you for that. Stand up on your feet with me. Now let's be dismissed. Praise God. I want to speak to you young guys and gals in here this morning just a little bit. Don't you fall for the peer pressure of your friends. I remember when I got saved, I had friends that used to come up and drink a beer with me and do this and that. But I, when I got saved, they never come around anymore. And you know what? I never did call them back to tell them uh, to come on up because they didn't have nothing to come for because I didn't have no beer anymore. If you got friends like that, you don't need them.